was the one the father loved. Yes. And so the father made him a coat that separated him from all of the other brothers. When they saw the coat, I'm talking about the blessing, they got angry with him. Even to the degree where they ripped the coat off him. Because they thought if I take the coat from him, I can destroy him. Because they thought the coat was the blessing. But the blessing was not the coat that the father made. It was the love that the father had for him that separated him from him. You can snatch the coat from it, but you can't stop him from loving me. Amen. This is what Paul said. This is what Paul said. Paul said, I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor things present, nor things to come can separate me from the what? The love. love. He didn't say from the car. Mm -mm. Because you can take the car. Mm. He didn't say from the house. Because you might lose. Oh, God. Oh, God. See, I can lose a whole lot of stuff. But it's love that's going to get it back to me. Yes, he will. Oh God, you can take this stuff. I might lose this stuff. But as long as he loves me, yes, yes. then he's going to continue to favor me. Amen. As long as he loves me, he's going to continue to open doors. That's right. But doors have been shut in my head. You can take the stuff, but you can't make it not love. Amen. Don't you know? See, there's some people who get upset with you because God keep blessing you because they think you don't deserve the blessing because they know something about your life. But I don't care what you've been through. Yeah. They can't stop God yeah. from loving you. Amen. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. Speak, Lord. They can't stop God mm, speak right. from loving you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it's the love for you that won't let you stay in peace. Yeah, I messed up. Yeah, I did wrong. But he, it's not your love for him. It's his love. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not so much my love for him. It's his love for why? Why? Why does he keep giving me another chance? Why is he so patient with me? Why is he so long-suffering with me? It, listen, I wouldn't even be that long-suffering with myself. Jesus, mm. But yet God is so patient with us. Yes, he is. Why? Because he loves us. And his love would not allow us to stay. His love, his love for us will not allow us to stay in the pit. And so he keeps coming and pulling us out of the pit and establishing us and favoring us because his love will not allow him to see us and not come and deliver us. All right, let's go back to this, 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 this uh, uh, Luke 6, verse, uh, uh, verse number 38, talks about giving. All right, why is it important for, for, for the believer? I'm not talking about the world right now. I'm talking about the believer. Because whatever's going to happen, first of all, understand this about seed. If you don't have seed, you don't have a future. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to say that again. Anytime you don't have seed, you don't have a future. And I'm not just talking about financial seed. I'm talking about any kind of seed. Anytime you find a person who doesn't have seed concerning where they're going, that person is lost. Mm -hmm. You find a young man who has no vision mm -hmm. right. for his life. See, see, see is the ability to see beyond where you are. Yes. It's the ability to see, to see beyond where you are, what you're going through. If you don't have that see, you have no future. Because all you can see and all you know is whatever it is right now. And so many people live their life for that. And they're lost right there. Because in order to move somewhere, you got to have seed. you got to have seed. Whether that be financial seed, whether it be a vision for your life, 
whether it be a goal or destiny, that has to be seed. That's why the word of God is so important because the word, when you hear the word preach, it causes seed to come in your life. It'll wake you up. It'll stir you up. It'll make you think about your tomorrow. It'll make you get some faith. It'll make you get a plan because the word has come to shake you and to give seed to you that you might sow that seed in your heart and move in life. Without seed, there is no future. That's why the devil desires to take seed from you. Even the word of God. He don't want you to hear the word of God because if you hear the word, you can change your life. That's right. If you hear the word of God, the word of God is all you need to change your life. He don't want you to hear the word. He don't want you to read your Bible. He don't want you to understand the things of God because with that comes power. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's right. So he fights you from holding the seed or having the seed. The Bible says immediately, immediately. He don't waste no time. He says immediately the enemy comes to try to steal the word. Because if he can take the word from you, he just took your future That's from you. Right. And no matter how good the man or woman preach, you can't move without the word. Because the word is what's going to give you the power to move. Mm -hmm. So he comes after the word. All right. Without seed, there is no future. Another issue about the seed is when you have seed, listen to this, when you have seed, you have to be deliberate in your sowing. You have to be deliberate in your sowing. What do I mean by that? If you have a farmer, if you have somebody who has a farm, they make a decision about how much harvest they want. And based on how much harvest they want, they pick out how much seed they need to sow. That's right. Oh, God, if you get this. They don't allow. They don't allow the amount of seed that they're going to sow to be determined by anything other than how much harvest I want to receive. Amen. You've got to learn how to sow based on the harvest that you want, not on what you have. I'm going to say that again. Your seed Amen. that you sow can never be based on where you are. You're already there. Yes. You're already getting that. If you want to go farther or get more, then your seed has to be based on where you are. Okay. If you read your Bible 30 minutes a day and your life is a certain way, then that 30 minutes a day is what allows your life to be where it is. Yes. Now, if you want to go higher than that, if you want a better life, if you want more peace, more joy, if you don't want, if you want to walk in more anointing, if you want more revelation, then you're going to have to increase that 30 minutes to an hour or whatever. You're going to have to add more to that 30 because the 30 is already sustaining you wherever you are. That's right. If you want more, you got to increase the seed sown. If you increase the seed sown, you increase the harvest returns. There cannot be an increase of harvest if there is no increase in seed. Even a man or woman that goes to the gym to work out, if they're working out with 100 pounds, at some point if they want to get stronger, they got to add more weight to the 100. You can't just keep using the 100 and think you're going to get stronger. If you want to get stronger, you got to add more weight to the 100. Why? Because it's the adding of the weight that's going to bring a greater increase. Very important. Very important. So when you decide on your seed, you don't decide on your seed based on what you have as a harvest now, but you decide, you decide or determine your seed based on the harvest that you want to receive. That's number two. Number, uh, uh, number three, you have to be systematic. I'm talking about the blessing. I'm talking about walking in the blessing. You have to be systematic. Write this down if you're taking notes. It's very important. Get your emotions out of it. That's right. <laughs> if you're going to serve God, get your emotions out of it. Because your emotions are the devil's playground. Mm -hmm. Your emotions are the devil's playground. If you're going to walk with God, you have to get rid of your emotions. You got to get rid of fear. You got to get rid of anger. You got to get rid of aggravation. You got to get all these emotions will hold you back. They will destroy you. You know, I was thinking the other day, I said, you know, for somebody who has been, uh, been saved, as long as I've been saved, I don't have no patience. Amen. I said that to myself. 
myself. For somebody who's been saved. And I, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I love God. I know I'm saved. But for somebody who's been saved, the number of years that I've been saved, I should have way more patience than I have. I, I don't have no patience. How, how can you be saved as long as I've been saved with the amount of patience? Look like I lose patience as I get older. <laughs> if I, I had to judge. Y'all remember that message I told you? If, if you judge yourself, then God don't have to come in. That's, and, right. that's what the Bible said. That's he said, right. if you take an account, if you take inventory, that's the word Deacon Piggy gave us. If you take inventory, of your own sex, right. then God don't have to come in and That's take right. you. And I said I should have way more patience than what I, and I'm almost scared to pray for patience because I know how to. <laughs> I know I, 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 I'm half my mind just want to ride with what I got. Because <laughs> I know how they, I know how they come, I know how they're developed. So half of me is scared say, God, give me more patience because, oh, Lord. <laughs> but in order to grow, whether it be your patience, whether it be peace, or whatever it might be, there has to be an add to the seed. More weight. Because without the adding to the seed or the weight, it cannot grow. It remains the same. So if you are where you are, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not where you want to be, then there has to be an adding. You cannot keep doing what you're doing and think it's going to get you. You do the same thing and then looking up at the sky, waiting for something to happen. It's not going to happen because that's not the way it works. God told Adam, he said, Adam, you got to till this ground. That's right. You gotta work the ground. The harvest is connected to your tilling, Adam. Yes. All right. This is what the Bible says. He says, "Give, and it shall be given." This is the law. This is the law. Give, not a suggestion. It's a, this is the principle. This is the law. Give, Corey, and it shall or will take shall out and put will. It will. This is what the Lord says. Be given to you. Press down. Good measure. What else it says? Press down and run it over. Cut one, get a little bit more. Show me. That's why I want you to stay right there. Listen to this. God says, if you work this principle, I will cause men, people, to come to you. And give into your hand. Amen. You ain't got to look up. You ain't got to look. You ain't got to look. You ain't got to. God says, if you do the principle, Amen. I will make people find you out, Search for you. so that they may put into your hand. Uh -huh. Not even people that you know. That's right. Not even people that that know. He said, I will make people. Search you out so that they might give into your bosom. Because that's the principle. This is why you got to take your emotions out of it. Because the devil will use your emotions to cause you to be afraid. The devil will use your emotions to cause you to be slow. Satan will use your emotions to cause you to be unfaithful. Satan will use your emotions to cause you to get frustrated. Satan will cause you through your emotions to uh, abort the process because you got offended or you got hurt or you got this. And so you, do, you give up and walk away because of what happened, because of your emotions. Your emotions will make you walk away from the very thing that God has sent to bless you. Frustration. I, 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 
preach to my own self. <laughs> Frustration! Forget it. The very thing that was designed to be a blessing to me, I have allowed to, to um, frustrate me. And now the blessing that would have came through my, listen to this, faithfulness. The blessing that would have came through my faithfulness, I have now negated. Got to start it over now. Because I have allowed what? My emotions. This is what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. He says a man that cannot control his emotions is like a city with no walls. An unprotected city. That means the enemy can come in and take whatever he wants from you whenever he want to take it. Because you have no protection. Because you can't control your emotions. You can't control your temper. You can't control your mouth. You can't control your arrogance. You can't control your feelings. And because you can't control, if the enemy is, he, 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 all he got to do if he want to stop you is send a little trouble your way. Mm. Send a little aggravation your way. Send a little frustration your way. And because you can't control your emotions, it destroyed the whole thing. Come, same person come right in there and aggravate you. <laughs> same person. Come right in there. Like clockwork. <laughs> and shut the whole thing down. Now you mad. Now you upset. Now you frustrated. Now you angry. Now the blessing that's on your life is being hindered because you can't walk in love. One of the things I've learned, one of the things the Bible teaches us is that if you're going to walk in the blessing, you're going to have to learn how to walk in love. Yes. yes. And that's not easy. Oh, my yes. God. That's not easy. You're going to have to learn how to walk in love. The, the, the thing about God is you can't manipulate God. Mm -mm. And you can't fake him out. Mm -mm. Right. You have to be genuine with God. Yes. And so you got, you got, you got a genuine, genuine, say that word for me. Genuinely. Genuinely love or forgive or be kind right. or be patient what, what, whatever whichever one of the things you're doing it has to be genuine if you're going to be kind it has to be real if it's going to be patient it's got to be real genuine. because you can't fool God yeah. and, when, and, and, and if you don't get uh, if you don't get past that then that becomes a roadblock a stumbling block for the blessing that is on you. There's no question about it. You are blessed. You are favored. But there are things that can hinder the blessing and the favor that's on your life. Like anger. Mm. Anger. It's easy to get caught up in anger. Yeah. But anger is a robber. Anger is a thief. Yeah. Anger robs you of your peace. It robs you of the grace the joy. It robs you of the presence of God because you can't, you can't um, enjoy the presence of God if you're full of pain. You can't even pray right. <laughs> Come on. You can't even pray right. How are you going to pray if you're full of pain? You can't pray right. Because the inner flow, it, it interrupts the flow. It interrupts the, the communion. The blessing is on your life, but Things that will destroy or hinder the blessing. The things that will hinder. I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave you alone. The Bible teaches us about Esau. And the Bible teaches us that we have to be careful not to sell our birthright or the blessing. Not to give it away for a little of nothing, for a momentary fits or a momentary uh, pleasure. That's a good word. A momentary pleasure. You sell out the blessing. Because I'm going through a tough place. I'm going through a struggle. 